So what we have here is the Moog 55. This is a reissued Moog 55. Um, Moog uh, have only made 55 of these re reissues, so this is one of the 55. And in fact, in the MESS collection, we have access to two of these machines. So uh, this is the one that's currently installed in the studio at the moment. Um, so when Moog first started producing modular, you could buy them as a la carte systems. And in fact, most of the big Moog modulars that you see are a la carte systems where essentially uh, the artist or person commissioning the synthesizer would ask Moog to put the modular together in a particular way. Um, and then they would build the modules and insert them into cases and stuff. So that's why every Moog you kind of see tends to look a little bit different. But then later on down the track, what Moog started to do is to produce like pre-designed modular systems. And so that's what the 55 here is. Um, and essentially, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a big mono synth. Um, it looks very impressive uh, because it's such a, um, a huge machine and also uh, with the way that Moog designed their synthesizers is they were designed for sort of like accuracy. Uh, that's the reason why uh, composers like Wendy Carlos would use it for the switched on bark stuff and things like the um, soundtrack to Clockwork Orange. Uh, and so uh, basically what this synthesizer comprises of is there's oscillator banks here. Uh, so we have like uh, six oscillators here uh, plus another seventh oscillator here which can be used for various things. Uh, these oscillators are controlled by a driver here. Uh, likewise, these oscillators are controlled by a single driver here, so they can all be synchronized together to work together. Uh, we then have like three basically mixers down here. There's one, two, three, like little four channel mixers that are built into the console. Uh, here we have the fixed filter bank, uh, which is like a comb filter bank essentially in the top here. Uh, we have the classic uh, high pass filter and low pass filter here. Uh, and then across the top we have uh, VCAs, so one, two, three, four, five VCAs. Uh, and then we have envelope generators, so one, two, three, four, five envelope generators. Uh, a little delay for being able to trigger second envelopes with a bit of a delay. Uh, and then we also have here the sequencer, which is an eight step sequencer built into the unit. Um, and a couple of extra filters and just some other utility things like noise generators here and multiples for doing signal splits. Um, so basically what I'll do now is just uh, build a little patch um, using the sequencer just from scratch. Uh, the tuning might be a bit wonky and strange but we'll just see how we go as we go along. Alright, so uh, first thing that I will do, and looking at all these different cables, um, so first thing I'll do is just get these three oscillators uh, coming into a mixer. Uh, so each one of these oscillators I can choose what uh, waveform I want to take out of it. So there's sine, triangle, sawtooth and rectangle. So let's just go, uh, let's just grab a sine wave and put it into the first channel of the mixer here. We'll grab a triangle wave, put it into the second channel of the mixer here. And grab a third uh, sawtooth wave and put it in here. So essentially those three waveforms are now going into this little mixer. So then what I would need to do is patch across. So let's find another cable here. And what we'll do is we'll patch the output of the mixer into the input of this other mixer over here, which is then going into the recording and the speaker. So what we do, so let's just dial up that input there, dial up the gain here, okay. And so what we can hear here is there's so we've got our first oscillator here, which is our sine tone. Our second oscillator here, which is our triangle wave. Okay, and our third oscillator here, which is our sawtooth wave. It's a bit clicky at the moment because it's very low, so we'll just take that up into a higher range. Okay, so we've got these three oscillators all working together. So now let's just give them a bit of a tune to get them all in tune together. Okay, that's pretty good. And so basically now I've just proven that these oscillators are coming through. So now in order to do the next part of what I wanna do is say I'm gonna run it into the filter. So what I need to do then is to take that output and run it into the filter here. So the output coming out of the mixer into the filter. And then we will take the output of the filter using another cable. Okay. And just to make sure that's working, we'll just go back into the same input of the mixer here. Okay, and so we're now running these three oscillators through the filter here. 
Okay, so the classic beautiful smooth Moog filters. Now if I wanted to have that filter to be automatically modulated, what I'd need to do is use one of these other oscillators here in order to do it. So what I'm gonna do is use this fourth oscillator here as a sine wave. I'm gonna plug it into the control input of the filter. Now it's running very fast at the moment, so in order to hear it, we just need to slow it down. Right, and there we can now hear this oscillator controlling this filter. Okay, and if we want to change the speed, we just change the pitch of the oscillator. So these oscillators, Bell's working as like audible oscillators that we can hear to make sounds. They can also work as sub oscillators to be able to modulate things and essentially work as an LFO. So now we've got that up and running. The next thing we'd probably do is want to articulate that through an amplifier. So we plug this into the amplifier here. And when I say articulate, we just want to add an envelope to it. So I can patch in and out of the envelope mod mod module here and then bring it back into the mixer input here. So the amplifier has its own manual volume control, so I can bring the sound back up in here and turn it down. But then I actually want to have the amplifier controlled by an envelope generator. So in order to do that, and because I'm going to build a sequence here with the sequencer, what I'm going to do is in fact get the sequencer to control the envelope being triggered. So the next thing that I need to do is to take the output of the sequencer controller here and essentially what's happening here is there's a square wave that's driving the steps of the sequencer uh, and we're going to plug that into this interface selection thing here and then for the Moog we actually use these different cables these little old school two pin like almost like telephone patching cables and so we're going to go in here to the trigger output which is going to send a trigger Ooh, and we'll go in here to the envelope generator, okay? And so what's going to happen is that as the sequencer runs, it's going to trigger this envelope to do its thing. And then what we'll do is we'll take the output of the envelope and go into the control input of the amplifier. So now that I've had that set up, if I start the sequencer going, it's going to trigger the actual envelope to run there, which you can hear it running there in the background. So as I speed up and slow down the sequencer, for each step in the sequencer, the oscillator is sending a trigger into the interface, comes out of the trigger out, tells the envelope generator what to do, and the envelope generator in turn controls the amplifier. So the last step of what I need to do now is to take these row of buttons here that can control the pitch, and I can need to patch that from here into the driver, the oscillator driver, that will control the overall pitch of all three oscillators. So from this row here, I take the output voltage from here and then I send it into the control voltage, okay, of the oscillator driver. Let's just, okay, and so now what's happening is that all of these dials here are controlling the various pitches of the thing. So in order to check that, what I can actually do is just make sure that I actually have each one of these individually. I actually need to set up another thing up. <laughs> it's a little bit tricky, but so basically what, I, what I'm doing here is that each one of these steps, and if we just skip all the other steps here in the sequencer and just have one step going, if I control this knob, you can hear how it's in fact controlling all three of these oscillators. And just to verify that, we can turn it down here. So what we're listening to is the sine wave generator. Right, then the triangle generator, and then lastly, the sawtooth generator. So if we get all three going at once, we've got all three voices happening there together, running through the filter, and then we can just essentially set up our little sequence to run, dial in some random voltages here, Okay, I'm gonna put these cables down.
And because we've got the keyboard control in as well, you can start to use the keyboard to control the overall sequence. There you have it, a pretty little quick, in inverted commas, introduction into how to patch up the Moog 55.